गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द सेकेंड डे ऑफ लाइव सेशन ऑफ चेस एंड समथिंग मोर सो इट हैज़ बीन अ वेरी नाइस फर्स्ट सेशन द रिस्पॉन्स हैज बीन ओवरवेलमिंग सो फ्रेंकली स्पीकिंग वेन आई स्टार्टेड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ लाइव सेशन आई नेवर एक्सपेक्टेड दैट आई वुड हैव सो मच ऑफ यू नो पॉजिटिव रिस्पॉन्स अमंग द स्टूडेंट्स अमंग माई फ्रेंड्स and there will be so many viewerships aur uh, namaste dosto uh, aaj uh, hum dusra session shuru karne ja rahe hain uh, chess coaching aur chess ke bare mein kuch advices ka to jab humne kal pehla session kiya tha to us samay mere ko laga tha ki shayad hum har saptah mein ek bar aayenge aapke beech mein aur uh, basically bachcho ko engage karenge chess mein ताकि वो अगर बहुत ज़्यादा फ्रस्ट्रेटेड हो जाए अभी का जो हालात है उसमें बट आफ्टर द रिस्पॉन्स ऑफ फर्स्ट सेशन इट बिकेम क्लियर दैट इट्स इट विल बी अ गुड आइडिया टू कम एवरी डे विद अ फ्रेश गेम फ्रेश आइडियाज़ एंड टू एंगेज विथ यू एवरी डे वेल रिगार्डिंग द रिस्पॉन्स आई टोल्ड यू येस्ट डे दैट मोस्टली आई विल आई एम अवेलेबल ऑन फेसबुक and if you really want uh, any uh, subjects to be covered in the next uh, session it would be a good idea to message me on uh, messenger i am on facebook so you can message me on facebook messenger and i have received quite a few responses i have received lots of phone calls uh, many of them asking for particular topics so is vishay mein main bolna chahunga the first well very important message which i got was there have been quite a few viewers viewers from bangladesh as well as from the various districts of bengal and they asked me to have this commentary also in bengali so jara banglay onurodh korchen amake ei video ta korar jonno tader uddeshye ami bolchi jara amake onurodh korchen tader ke ami obosshoi khub भारत लगत जो बांगल् बोलते किंतु अधिकांश हमार बंधु ता क्यु आयदार हिंदी स्पीकिंग किंबा इंग्लिश किंबा हिंदी बोझे तो आशा करी प्राय सब बांगाल हिंदी किंबा इंग्लिश बुझते पर तो एक कष्ट जी अपारा हिंदी फलो करते इट उड बी हेल्पफुल फर अल दिवर्स टू कम्युनिकेट उथ मि टूगेदार सो रिज्यूमिंग द टपिक some of uh, the viewers asked uh, lessons uh, from a particular openings so as i said that in my first session i said yesterday that i want to reach viewers from uh, maximum number of viewers and i have friends almost from from many many countries almost across all the continents so uh, it would be difficult for all of them to enjoy my sessions as much if i concentrate or focus on only one opening because as you know every every player would be interested in different openings so i would rather restrict my lessons to typical advices principles of chess and most importantly uh i would not like to distinguish a chess match between opening middle game and end game me although sabhi coaches match you win one match you get one point you don't get three points for victories in three parts of the games you don't say that oh i played better opening but i blundered in the middle game and then i played decent sorry there is some some net uh, connectivity problems so before i move on to chess i would really like to thank uh all of you who have uh, really uh, liked my session yesterday and some of you have had lots of flattering comments and uh, of course some of you have given me advices which uh, which are useful for not only me but also for you and especially i would like to point out one piece of uh, you know facebook post which was made by i was quite surprised because these lessons और दिस क्लास वॉज मेन्ट टू एनगेज चिल्ड्रेन मैं 
बेसिकली बच्चों को एंगेज करने के लिए और हाँ जो एमेचर खिलाड़ी हैं उनको एंगेज करने के लिए मैंने ये वीडियोस बनाया मतलब फेसबुक लाइव पोस्ट करने में जा रहा हूँ लेकिन कुछ दर्शकों में काफ़ी स्ट्रॉन्ग प्लेयर्स शायद मेरे से भी कुछ स्ट्रॉन्ग प्लेयर्स उपस्थित है और वो गेम्स देख रहे हैं जो अच्छा लग रहा है इसलिए कि मैं एक छोटा सा कंपैरिजन करना चाहूँगा वैसे एक पोस्ट इंटरनेशनल मास्टर और वुमेंस ग्रैंड मास्टर निशा मोहता ने किया है और उन्होंने मेरे बारे में बहुत अच्छे कुछ उन मत दिया है उन्होंने एंड हर कमेंट्स वर रियली फ्लैटरिंग टू मी थैंक्स निशा निशा थैंक्स फॉर हैविंग सो मच ऑफ रेस्पेक्ट एंड लव फॉर मी आई होप यू विल कीप ऑन एन्जॉइंग दिस सेशंस बट Frankly speaking, this these sessions are not meant for you. Uh, as I say these words for you, uh, I also recall that once I heard somewhere and I read in one of the reliable from one of the reliable sources that Mikhail Tal, one of my favorite world champions, who of course uh, Mikhail Tal is favorite of many players for his swash backling style of play, so he once said. that he follows uh, during those days in soviet union they had this radio programs on chess so there was no television uh, in those days and misha mikhail tal he used to follow those lessons for beginners and it always pays to invest in fundamentals of chess so sometimes i feel the strong players they keep on analyzing variations 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 and they go to so so much depth that they forget the fundamentals sometimes they ignore the fun- fundamentals so if misha tal could uh, i mean give time for for uh, hearing this radio programs and for fundamentals of chess why not nisha <laughs> thanks nisha anyway let's get back to today's game i hope today's game will also be enjoyable by the way uh sometimes i would like to show these games are very instructive and i hope you will enjoy entertaining also but some of the games will be between players of unequal strength so one player from one side may be very strong player and the opponent may not be a well known player so these games are very very useful for instruction because a strong players can carry out his plan without much resistance so while teaching chess or while showing these games uh often amateurs or a beginner he can pick up the ideas in toto if we show games of two really very strong players normally what happens none of the players would leave any inch for other players and the plans are not executed properly so for instructional purpose it always pays how a strong player defeats a medi- mediocre player so keeping that in mind i would like to show today's game so without much ado let's move on to chess i hope you can see the board well uh today's game as you can see is between uh one of my favorite players uh the first world chess champion wilhelm steinitz so steinitz so steinitz was uh, the first world chess champion and he was not only a great chess player but he was also a chess genius he was also a great chess teacher uh and all his games were not only very good but also very instructive and the games of yester years i mean the old games are always very instructive because uh they play with opponents who are not as strong as opponents of world champions would be today so yeah i think the whole board is visible okay yeah so let's uh, get going with the game 
this is a white is Steinitz and his opponent is Mongradian and this game was played about 150 years ago. White is Steinitz, black is Mongradian. So first move, white played e4. Black defended d5. Well, the name of this defense, as most of you already know, is center counter or Scandinavian. If you ask me per uh, personally, I would uh, I would say this is not such a bad defense as the reputation would say. Yeah. yeah, I think the chessboard is visible to all of you. Okay, thanks. Let's let's get going. I think the game was yeah. There was a phone call. Okay, let's get going with the lesson. So this is center counter defense, the Scandinavian. And if you ask me personally, I think this defense is quite okay. I mean, it's one of the playable variations. Uh, some of the strong players employ it regularly even today, although it may not be a regular. Uh, uh, defense, a favorite defense of most of the world champions but as far as I know some very f strong players from time to time they play this white plays e takes d5 black takes queen takes d5 uh, for most chess players it's a common knowledge that it's not a good idea to bring out queen early in the opening. Agar aap wazir bohat jaldi game mein laate hain, to aapko satark rehna padega ki opponent aapka wazir ko har move mein harass karke tang na kare aur development mein aage na nikal jaye. So you have to be very careful that the opponent doesn't move ahead with development of pieces so here for instance white can play knight c3 attacking the queen and developing as i said yesterday the best moves are in chess especially in the openings are those which have more than one idea so here white develops as well as attacks the queen black moves queen d8 well, some of you may frown. This game was played about 150 years ago. More than 150 years ago. During those times, the chess opening theory was not as well developed as today. There were not so many books written. There was no computer. So the players played those games according to uh, their beliefs, thoughts and whatever. So here most players would prefer Queen A5 or Queen D6. So these are the moves which are more popular today. These are maybe better moves. But Queen D8 is not such a bad move. Maybe Mr. Mongradian thought that the Queen shouldn't lose more time. So he took it back. Uh, so that white doesn't win more tempi attacking the queen. Just to remind all of you that in the opening we bring out pieces very fast. It's a phase of mobilization of forces and not only we bring out pieces fast but our aim should be to the best possible square from where it can participate in, in play in the middle game. White played d4. Good move. 
the pawn controls the center as well as this opens the diagonal for the bishop black played another move which may not well a modern master may not like this move as much uh, any player today would rather play knight f6 today keeping the option of bishop's development on this diagonal and only then play e6 but of course the move played by mr mongradian is not such a bad move as it looks to be because subsequently he plays all correct moves and it he gets a playable position he gets a good position white played knight f3 the future world champion wilhelm steinitz he plays a move which even uh, any modern master would play he brings out his piece black played knight f6 white moved bishop d3 uh i would like to pause a bit and once again remind these principles in chess well in openings or even in middle games or end games wherever we have certain guidelines and those guidelines are something if you follow those guidelines there are chances that you will make lesser mistakes uh of course there are times when you have to break those guidelines for for getting attaining something higher but here why develops his pieces very fast and whenever you develop your pieces in the openings just bear in mind the knights are best placed towards the center especially towards a square or on a square from where it cannot be driven away knights are very active pieces in the center and in this game we are going to see exactly that the bishops are very active on open diagonals so this is a diagonal which this bishop takes control and rooks on open lines so while bringing out your pieces bear in mind this principle and mostly you will play the correct moves so black develops his bishop white castles and black castles so yesterday i told most of you i mean if you could recall yesterday that when we castle there are two objects one is to hide our king to the corner of the board but that's a lesser objective the main objective should be to activate a rook remember rooks are second most powerful piece on a chessboard so many piece many players they they ignore the rooks they keep it in the corner for a long time and it doesn't participate in in uh, the fight so we always have to keep in mind how to activate the rooks and we shall see more of that in this game now black played some move a move which i like very much that is he played well sorry it's white to play uh i would ask all of you to just take a break i would like to pause for about half a minute and i would like you to guess which move you would play here well if you give this position to me and if you if you say uh, it's a normal position uh not played by stan it's a someone i would rather play prefer moves like rook e1 or bishop g5 but stan it's played a move which is also very good but somehow many modern masters may not play that move he played bishop to e3 he developed his piece but to our eyes 
a rook on e1 on an open file is more logical or developing a bishop to f4 or g5 is better because from here it controls a better diagonal. But Steinitz played a move which I like very much now having seen this game and which may not appeal to most players when they see this initially. It closes the e-line and it places a bishop on a, on a square which is simply defending the pawn and blocked by his own pawns. But uh, a few moves later we'll see exactly why this move was played and how uh, powerful this move is, how effective this move is. Black played b6. Well, black ka bohat easy maksad hai yahan pe. Black apna bishop ko active the strongest possible diagonal mein lana chahata hai. Jo bishop yahan se band hai, is diagonal se khel nahi pa raha hai. Wo bishop sabse achha diagonal se khelega, uske liye b6 khela gaya hai. Aur ab, white ne ek aisa move khela. Ab white aisa move khela, which is actually very powerful and effective. And that shows why bishop e3 was played in the previous move. He played the move knight to e5. Remember I said knights love central squares. Knights are pieces which really hate to be in the corner of the board. So, for example, the knight on b8, it controls only three squares and that too on its own territory. Or, is ke saath aap is knight ko compare ki jiye, ye na keval beach mein baita hua hai, balki ye art squares control kar rahe hai. Or, in artho squares, हर तरफ है और इससे न केवल नाइट पावरफुल है बल्कि नाइट किसी भी साइड में अटैक कर सकता है जहां भी उसको वीकनेस दिखे तो इसलिए अगर संभव हो यदि संभव हो तो आप हमेशा कोशिश कीजिए कि घोड़े को बिल्कुल बोर्ड का बीच बीच में रखा जाए और न केवल घोड़ा खुद पावरफुल बनेगा बल्कि वो फ्लेक्सिबल भी बनेगा वो कहीं भी खेल सकता है तो तो हाँ अब हमें पता चला कि बिशप को e3 क्यों खेला गया था ऑफ कोर्स यहां पे कोई भी प्लेयर वो जानेगा कि नाइट e5 एक पावरफुल मूव यहां भी हो सकता था क्वीन से यदि d4 यहां पे पॉन अभी भी मरता नहीं है क्योंकि ये डिस्कवर्ड अटैक बिशप से हम h7 चेक करके ये क्वीन अटैक्ड है तो हम चाहते तो नाइट e5 अभी भी खेल सकते थे लेकिन किसी ना किसी समय ये d पॉन को डिफेंड करना ही पड़ता तो इसीलिए स्टेनिज ने बिशप e3 यहां पे बिशप e3 गया और इसके लिए एडिशनल सपोर्ट दिया ताकि बाद में नाइट e5 आराम से विदाउट मच कंसर्न दिया जा सकता है बिशप b7 एंड नाउ इज द टाइम इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट मोमेंट आई वुड लाइक टू पॉज वंस अगेन फॉर अबाउट वन मिनट एंड आस्क यू टू गेस what white played from here it's a very important moment of the game well if you guessed cor correctly congratulations white played f4 so the reason bishop e3 was played 
Had there been no bishop here, black could have captured the pawn with a check. So what does the move f4 achieve? Remember, as I told you a short while ago, the rooks are very powerful piece. The rooks are second most powerful piece on a chessboard. So many times we forget to activate the rooks. And here as I said a few moves back that I would have preferred rook e1. But Steinitz, a great player, he visualized the rook can be activated on the f line itself. Here the rook can get activated and in future of course I can push the pawn further. I am supporting, I am over supporting this e5 square, the knight. And of course the rook can sometimes go to f3 and as we shall see the rooks are very active on open lines but sometimes the real destruction comes when they shift along the ranks. So we shall see from this game how this rook emerged as the hero of the game. Now black played knight bd7. Well black is developing his pieces. It seems everything is perfect for both sides. White's pieces are more active. Once again let's guess what a world champion played from here. कभी कभी कोचेस लोग या टीचर्स लोग मजाक करते हैं और एक ट्रिक प्ले करते हैं तो मेरे को याद है एक कथित एक फेमस ग्रैंड मास्टर जो बहुत विख्यात है अभी भी तो उन्होंने कई पोजीशंस अच्छे प्लेयर्स को दिए और उन्होंने कहा कि आप यहां से अगला मूव गेस कीजिए एंड ऑफ कोर्स ऑल ऑफ अस व्हेन द ग्रैंड मास्टर आस्क्ड अस to guess uh, the best move from uh, those positions which he uh, asked us to solve. We took a lot of time and it was very difficult for us to find the best move. We tried to force a win. But the trick the Grandmaster played was the simplest move was the best. And we missed, all of us missed the simplest moves. So here, maybe something like that. But I have given you this position because there is also a hidden lesson. White played simple move queen e2. Kyon khela? Kyonki he wanted to activate this rook. Kaise activate hoga? Agar mein aapko kahun ki ye rook few moves mein shayad g3 ye h3 pe pohunch jayega. So aapko lagega kaise? Well, hum log is game khel ke game ke baad hum dekhenge kaise karke is position mein इसको एक्टिवेट किया गया है आ, कभी कभी ये रुख ई वन पे भी आ सकता है और कभी कभी ये रुख शिफ्ट करके इवन फर्दर G1 या H1 या H3 थ्री भी जा सकता है तो ब्लैक ने यहां नाइट D5 खेला अगर आप कहें दिस मूव लुक्स क्वाइट गुड लेकिन देर वॉज अ स्ट्रॉगर मूव फॉर ब्लैक ही कुड हैव प्लेड पॉन टू C5। फाइव आई थिंक मोस्ट ऑफ द modern chess players or grandmasters today would rather play pawn to c5. Uh, the reason why I prefer this move to knight d5 which was played by Mr. Mongradian 
150 years ago is by attacking or counter attacking the center black doesn't allow white to build up an attack on the king side white has to attend the center now so for example white has to play rook to d1 black may capture cd bishop d4 and after exchange of this knight simply move somewhere so these are not the only moves but just to show you a sample variation this is how the game could have proceeded and of course in future black's queen can come up the rooks can take d and c file uh, white would be little better but not as much as in the game in the real game black played knight to d5 uh, this move looks not so bad actually it is not such a bad move but as i said c5 would have been even better this threatens the bishop on e3 remember this bishop although restricted by its own pawn is actually holding these pawns together holding white's position together and all white's other pieces are very active the knight on e5 is very active the bishop is very active so if black can exchange this bishop and then play c5 suddenly like yesterday black will be having an extra bishop and if he can activate that bishop he will be having very good counterplay so white has to be very careful what to do now he has to take a decision so in this game white played knight takes d5 he preferred to remove this knight with his own knight black to play and probably the most important position in the whole game so i would like to pause once again for half a minute and make you guess what would be your choice black can recapture with the bishop or with the pawn well black preferred to capture this knight with a pawn and in chess just as in life when you want to gain something you have to give something of course he could have captured with the bishop and with a hindsight this was a better move but he played this move thinking that since white has moved the pawn to d4 and f4 this e4 square does not have a pawn cover so ideally black would love to have his knight in the center as i said knights belong to the center and if he manages to get the knight there then that knight would actually block this bishop's diagonal and of course white's attack would be hampered and black's terri uh, terrific knight the good knight here on the center would provide counterplay now black may even go for attack with the help of this knight so that was his dream uh, and if he gets two move just knight f6 and knight e4 he can achieve that goal but as i said uh, to achieve that goal he had to sacrifice something and what was it he gave and with the hindsight we can conclude that capturing d5 with the pawn might have been a big mistake it's white to play and white has to be very accurate because if black gets the knight to e4 black may be even better so white to play and white has to play the best move not only to prevent the knight coming to e4 but to win from here 
So guess your move once again half a minute. Well, if you have guessed this move correctly, congratulations and I think you have attained a certain level of play if you can guess moves from here. White played Rook to F3. It's a very very good move and already White is threatening uh, a win from here. Right here, White is threatening to finish the game directly. White ka threat yaha se agar black koi neutral move ya kuch aise hi move khele jaise maan lete hain c5 ya a6 kuch bhi move khele to white seedha yaha bishop se h7 capture karega aur king se h7 marne ke baad this is called a sacrifice jahan pe hum koi jyada mehanga piece jaise bishop pawn se jyada expensive hai mehanga hai jyada valuable hai तो उसको हम सेक्रीफाइस किए किंग को बाहर निकाल लिए किंग के कवर हम हटा लिए और फिर रुख का चेक दिए और थैंक्स टू दिस नाइट ऑन ई फाइव मैंने कहा था ये नाइट इतना पावरफुल है इतना शक्तिशाली है कि कहीं पे भी खेल सकता है और अब चूंकि हम अटैक आइडेंटिफाई कर चुके हैं किंग के सामने तो आप देखिए नाइट किंग के सामने जो वीक स्क्वायर्स है उस पर कब्जा बना कर रखा है और इसके लिए किंग भाग नहीं पा रहा है नाइट के लिए किंग को वापस जाना है और क्वीन एच फाइव इसके बाद मेट किसी भी हालत में बचता नहीं है क्वीन ऑन एच एट तो वाइट का प्लान और थ्रेट है कि वाइट रूक एफ थ्री से बिशप से बिशप से एच सेवन कैप्चर करेगा वेल uh, well, अगर ब्लैक यहां पे नाइट एफ सिक्स खेलता है नाइट एफ सिक्स actually defends against this threat and as i said any move having two ideas is always a great move so if the knight defends on h7 and threatens to enter on a strong square it's always a move which you, sh you should consider unfortunately it is not the best move here because white would have continued with the plan by playing rook to h3 and once again he threatens the same thing if it's white to move here well let's insert a null move here suppose black plays any neutral move white once again threatens this check once again sacrifice because despite the defense once again white comes queen h5 and there is no defense against queen h7 or if the knight moves queen h8 so white once again threatens that so black to play black would rather play knight to e4 well uh i have to remove that null move black played knight e4 if black plays knight e4 rather white would play queen h5 now we have identified the weakness in black's camp that is this the king the king is the weakness so just imagine the rook white has all the firepower looking at the king he has this rook this queen this knight and this bishop if allowed and as i said if you could recall two moves back i said my rook on a1 would swing to h3 actually it may not swing even if it comes to f1 so few moves back this one rook was on f1 and one was on a1 now if it swings to f1 we can see that one rook remains on f1 and one instead of a1 has swung to h3 so this is how 
the rook on a1 virtually has gone to h3. So all white's pieces are very active and they're firing at black's king and he doesn't have sufficient defense. The only move here would be this and white can uh, remove the cover by playing knight to g4. Now he threatens knight to h6. So after taking the h6 pawn, black would capture and white would capture once again. So he would basically tear apart black's king's defense. The only move here would be to play queen d6 defending this pawn. But white can simply exchange this strong knight and play f5 with the idea this pawn move not only opens the diagonal of the bishop but also it threatens to sacrifice here once again and also it threatens to somehow move the pawn to f6 and remove the rank wise defense by the queen. So after white plays f6 the queen cannot defend h6 and all these three pieces here would actually uh, tear apart the defense. I mean simply eat away black's king. So it would be winning overwhelming position for white. So that is why knight f6 although desirable but is not working here. White would simply play rook h3 and after knight here would continue his attack with all the heavy pieces. So black played pawn to f5. It's not a bad move at all. It blocks this diagonal. So basically it's a way to to discourage the bishop on d3 from participating in attack. It's white to play. White played rook to h3. It's a nice move. White continues with his attack. And given chance, well, white's next move once again would be queen to h5. Attacking at this point, this point and this point. These are the weaknesses. So once again, black would love to play a knight here to enter here as well as defend this point and control this. But unfortunately, it doesn't work because this f5 pawn is left undefended because as you see, this file, this rook which was supporting the pawn is suddenly blocked. So knight f6 is desirable move but cannot be played once again. Black played g6. So now having defended the pawn and having defended this square, he now finally threatens his desired move, knight f6 from where it will jump to e4 and black will be happy. So once again white to play, critical position. Guess, guess your move. One minute and you can guess your move. Well, white played a move which is the strongest move in this position. Um, I would like to tell you that there are certain positions which offer equivalent moves. Like there may be more than one good move. But this in this position there is clearly one best move. And the rest of the moves may be playable but not the best. So here, white played g4. After the game, we shall revise. We shall go through this game once again. And I shall tell you exactly, the not only the critical points, but the most important lesson from this game.
I would like to emphasize uh, when we revise this game. But there has been no let up in White's attack. Had White delayed even one move by some preparation, say White brings his rook or something, Black would have played knight f6 and then suddenly Black's defense would be strong enough. There would be no immediate win. White played g4. Immediately he attacks without giving chance of knight f6 once again. So you see, the move knight f6 is desirable and it was desirable since last three moves. But he is not getting a chance to play. Even if he plays now, he is losing a pawn. And of course, with that, the game. Because the defense collapses. So white doesn't allow black to breathe freely. Continuously, he hammers black. And some of you may frown that white's king position is getting weaker. Isn't it? One should not move. There is one guideline or one law which says you should not move pawns in front of your king. But friends, every guideline, as I said, has exceptions, not exceptions actually. There are other rules. For example, I can give you one example. Uh, it's always good to be punctual for classes. That is one law which your parents, teachers have taught you. But then there is some accident which happens and you have to attend your relative. Now, which is more important? You go to attend your relative, you arrive late in classroom, you have broken one law, but you have attained something bigger. You have taken him to hospital. So in the same way, here, when you break one law in chess, and if you achieve something bigger, there is no bigger law in chess than to checkmate opponent's king. And by playing g4, basically you are activating your pieces which can reach out to your opponent's king faster in this position than your opponent's pieces can reach you. So, dosto, he moved bahut mahatvapurna tha, g4. Uh, is move ke zariye, aap apna opponent ka position bahut jaldi tod rahe ho. Aur khud ka king weak hua, wo utna weak nahi hua, kyunki opponent ka pieces aapka king par pahunch nahi paayenge yaha pe. Aap uska pehli hi opponent ke king pa, tak pahunch jayenge. तो ये मूव न केवल ये बिशप को एक्टिव कर रहा है d3 बिशप को बल्कि नाइट f6 को भी रोक रहा है तो यहां पे ब्लैक ने f g4 मूव किया f से g4 कैप्चर किया वेल दिस इज अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट पोजीशन स्टाइन इज ट्रू टू हिज स्टाइल ही कीप्स ऑन हैमरिंग द ओपोनेंट फर्स्ट ही एक्टिवेट्स हिज पीसेस वेरी फास्ट and then the moment he gets chance to attack he keeps on hammering his pieces his opponent if you ask me my choice would be and if you ask me what my opponents would play i mean what i would ask my students to play my choice would be simply capture the pawn with the queen in the next move bishop or knight can capture on g6 remove the uh, king cover and with the help of rook queen and so many pieces we can launch a checkmating attack and remember there is also attack on this knight but one reason we should be wary of here black has two possible defense if black plays any move like say knight f6 white's queen can simply retreat to g2 and the attack on g6 remains the threat on g6 remains so white still threatens to win suppose black plays something like knight e4 i can still capture this and of course you cannot recapture because there's a checkmate uh, but there is one defense and yeah, of course, if you attack this rook here, this bishop is actually blocked. Bishop is unable to participate in defense. So one way 
which black can think here is somehow to bring the defense uh, uh, bring this bishop which is not participating in defense on the king's side to defend his own king so bishop if it comes to c8 white can simply demolish by playing this move this is a sacrifice but as i said it demolishes it black loses the two pawns as if the black king is naked he loses his dress he is left in the open he has to move here and white now just see this rook on a1 this is the only piece which is not participating in attack so a very nice move nice little move would be to tuck away the king in the corner and to make this come to g1 in the next move so white's idea among many others would be to play queen h6 check and rook g1 or rook g1 and queen h6 check would finish the game so it is a sample of how the game would have proceeded there is another defense which we would like to analyze here that is knight takes e5 it not only defends g6 but also attacks here and of course removes the most powerful attacking piece which white had and if white is careless if he captures if he plays a normal move like f e5 then he even risks throwing away all his advantage and losing black will simply play bishop c8 it's a very strong move it not only attacks the queen but this is called skewer that means if the queen moves he will capture the rook an attacking piece and also a more valuable piece the only defense would be to block the diagonal but then black would have another very nice move nice little move rook to f6 it defends g6 attacks e6 and suddenly white would be in trouble so maybe white has some defense but this is not desirable for black for white so after black takes this white the best recapture for white would be d e5 that is the only good move karan ye hai ki white abhi bhi bishops g6 threaten kar raha hai aur pawn jo e5 mein hai rook f6 ko roke hue hai aur abhi agar bishop c8 black deta hai to white e6 aur rook f6 defense jo abhi humne dikhaya tha yahan par white ke paas instead of having a pawn on d4 i have on f4 so i can push it to f5 that not only supports this but also threatens to destroy black's defense black would come bishop d4 bishop g5 or fg6 white has so many options so white would be winning so this would be a normal move queen to g4 and that is what i would rather play if you ask me to play from here but steinitz had a different style of course he was a very strong player he opted for rook sacrifice he wanted to win and win in style to usne rook se h7 mar diya so normally these kinds of moves these type of moves are very very risky if you do not calculate properly if you do not see exactly how you are going to win sacrificing a rook for a pawn uh may be very risky because you may end up losing if you don't get compensation so of course tennis was a strong player he had foreseen all the moves how he is going to win but for anybody who is not as strong as tennis i would request you not to play make a sacrifice without being sure of the consequences so tennis saw uh well he's he saw his win from here black played knight e5 he could have captured but it would have been very similar 
to what happened. So black first captured this attacking knight, white recaptured and then black took this rook. So black is one rook ahead. White took this pawn. White has seen exactly how he is going to win from here. But if you cannot see till the end, just look at the position and find out. See, this bishop is great. He is playing very well. He is covering squares in front of the king. This bishop is also doing a great job. This queen is also doing a great job. And this rook has a scope of entering fight from g1. So all the pieces are directed at black's king. Although black is a rook up, but what is this rook doing here? In the corner? Nothing. So qualitatively at this moment, white is not behind at all. Because one rook on a8 is simply sleeping right now. And not only the rook, but bishop on b7 is also not participating in defense. So, unless these rooks and the bishop participates in defense, white is not behind in development. So, if black gets two moves or one move, he can arrange his defense and then he will be winning. But as we see, white attacks relentlessly without any break. So here black plays rook g8. White's idea was of course queen g6 check with the help of the bishop and when the king goes back queen h7 checkmate. Black plays rook to g8. He defends this pawn. White played queen h5 check. Well all this has been had been calculated in advance. It has been foreseen in advance by great Wilhelm Steinitz. This pawn is pinned, so the only move left for black is king to g7. And now many of my students or amateurs who have seen this position very hurriedly said, why it is winning? How? He will play queen g6 check and the king cannot go to f8 because rook f1 check. And the king cannot go to h8 because queen h7 checkmate. They have forgotten that the queen is pinned. You cannot play checkmate. Computer would not take this move of course. But even if your opponent is clever enough, he will call the arbiter and claim illegal move. So the queen on g6 is pinned. So you have to be careful not to throw away a winning position. बिल्कुल आखरी मूव तक आपको कंसंट्रेशन बनाए रखना है जब आप मैच खेलेंगे और एक ऐसा भी मूव नहीं देंगे कैजुअल होके जिससे कि आपका इतना घंटे की मेहनत एक चेस में जो आपने लाया विनिंग पोजीशन वो गवा दे आप तो इस पोजीशन पे वाइट ने क्वीन एच सिक्स चेक खेला ये ओनली मूव है वाइट ने फिर क्वीन एच सेवन चेक खेला आ, ये बहुत अच्छी मूव है यहाँ पे ब्लैक के पास तीन मूव्स है डिफेंस के लिए और अदर चार मूव्स है किंग ई एट जा सकता है किंग एफ एट जा सकता है किंग ई सिक्स आ सकता है और नहीं तो रुक जी सेवन आ सकता है तो जैसे कि हम जानते हैं कि रुक जी सेवन अगर कोई आएगा तो या तो हम बिशप को जी सिक्स चेक दे सकते हैं अदरवाइज रुक एफ वन चेक सो यस्टरडे वाइल्ड शोइंग द गेम ऑफ क्राम I touched upon a point that even while attacking, try to bring new pieces into attack. That will make your position stronger suddenly because it will have additional force. So here for instance, rook on a1, although sitting in the corner, in one move it gets activated and after the king moves you can get back the rook with winning position. So here king e8 will also rook, uh, uh, lose the rook straight away. King f8, once again rook f1 check. So the only move for black is king e6. And this is once again a very critical position. 
white is winning but he has to be very careful and this is very instructive as well if ever you attain a position where you are attacking your opponent's king and the king is running away it runs away from the shelter and it comes to the middle board it is running away and you are chasing the opponent king in middle game be careful don't allow it to escape here there are many moves many attractive moves but the most effective move is queen to h3 check the reason is if you don't play this check black king may escape via d7 to c8 to b8 and finally away from the firepower of white's pieces it will escape so by playing queen h3 check it stops the king's escape so once again black's king is brought to the place where white has firepower white plays rook f1 check well here actually e6 check was also quite good that was also one win but another piece of instruction if ever you attain a winning position agar aapko kabhi winning position dikhta hai mil jata hai aur aapko ek win dikhta hai to koi zaruri aur sure win dikhta hai to koi zaruri nahi hai ki aap usse behtar move khoje dhoonde तो कभी कभी ये एडवाइस किया जाता है कैप ब्लंका ने कहा था कि अगर आपको एक अच्छा मूव दिखे आप इंतज़ार कीजिए हो सकता है इससे भी बेहतर मूव दिख जाए लेकिन अगर आपको विन दिख जाए श्योर कोई आवश्यकता नहीं है समय नष्ट करके दूसरा विन देखने का यू कैन सिंपली प्रोसीड विद द विनिंग मूव विच यू हैव सीन सो रुक टू एफ वन ब्लैक प्लेट किंग टू ई एट वाइट प्लेट क्वीन टू ई सिक्स attacking the rook and of course still white is one rook down but as i said two pieces the bishop on b7 rook on a8 are not participating in defense at all so effectively white is ahead on material now black played rook to g7 so once again there are many moves to win bishop to h6 would have been quite good but white has seen a win and he doesn't see any other moves he need not see other win he played bishop to g5 so if black wishes to bring the bishop to defense now it's too late now because if he plays this white will simply play queen to c6 check the notice the king cannot move to f file because rook controls the f file and of course the queen also attacks the rook so whether you play queen d7 or bishop d7 bishop to g6 and the king doesn't have any square so rook g6 queen g6 checkmate so black cannot defend by playing here so in the main game von gradian played queen to d7 and white played bishop to g6 check it's very elementary now black took the bishop white took the rook the only move and based on pin white played the rook to f8 the bishop cannot capture f8 there is no square for the king the only move was this and white captured the queen and checkmated so it has been a long game quite interesting and instructive so i would like to repeat the game very fast and emphasize the main points once again and the instructive moments from where we can learn some themes and we can apply in our future games so first of all center counter not a bad opening at all not a bad defense at all well this move is less played uh black opts for slightly passive position the bishop might have been more active had white played knight f6 so this brings us to one important law or guidance and advice in chess that which says keep options open especially in openings 
the knights come out first because bishops normally have more options. So by playing moves like e6, you are narrowing down your options. So note this, it's a very important piece of instruction. Keep options open in the opening. So play the moves which are more or less the best moves and keep the moves for your pieces which have more options for later stage of the game. Here white played knight f3. So notice how white is developing pieces. Every move he is bringing out a fresh piece. Sorry. On e6, knight f3, knight f6, bishop d3. So every move he brings new pieces. Black also follows suit. He brings the rook and he brings another bishop and he centralizes his knight. So he is playing very actively. Every move he is activating. He is bringing more pieces. And remember bishop on e3 was played not to block the line but the main aim was to activate the f rook on f file itself and support the d line d pawn so that the knight has a strong square on e5 a strong outpost black played bishop b7 white f4 black played knight bd7 white played queen e2 and the reason queen e2 was played was of course to activate this rook as i said Black had an option of hitting the center. In fact, the moves like c5 opens this line for rooks in future. As you rightly saw, or if you have observed, that in this game, white's rooks, both the rooks, were very active throughout the game. And black ignored the rooks activation of the rooks and till the final position the rook on a8 could not be activated so he lost because a very expensive piece a very valuable piece was left undeveloped black played knight d5 white captured knight d5 and now we see had black captured bishop d5 white could not have played rook f3 because the bishop controls the square of course, white had other options like he could might have played c4, he might have played different game. But white still had a better position. But not, he wouldn't have won the way he won in this game. So of course, it's difficult for a normal player, an ordinary player like Mongradian to, to, to see till the end from here. To visualize till the end. He saw d if ed5 is good because he can place the knight on e4 but that brings us to a very important point in the game and that is time had white wasted or not played the accurate moves from here or wasted even one move black would have got the knight to e4 so white played every move very strong very effectively and he did not give any respite he played rook f3, immediately threatening bishop h7. Black played f5 because knight f6 was not possible. He didn't get chance to play one move, knight f6. So for several moves he wanted to play knight f6, didn't get chance. So his dream of planting the knight on e4 was left shattered. He couldn't play that move. So he played rook f3, f5. Rook h3, g6 he wanted to once again get the knight here but no i will not allow you he took and as i said i wanted to play queen f queen g4 but steinitz doesn't want to give opportunity for knight f6 so queen g4 maybe he thought opponent would play knight f6 and steinitz wants more stylish he doesn't want knight f6 at all he hates black's move knight f6 so he played Rook h7 he demolished immediately. And this sacrifice where one side sacrifices a piece, a valuable material to remove the pawns, pawn cover of opponent's king is called demolition sacrifice in language of chess tactics. And this is what we have seen today. We have also seen pin we have also seen the theme of not allowing the king to escape and of course 
we have seen pin once again so this was a very good game a very instructive game some of you can argue one sided game because the opponent maybe was not as strong as the masters of today but at least that gave us an opportunity to see how to win against a not so strong opponent an average opponent how to activate your pieces fast and not give your opponent time i hope this game has been very instructive for you and entertaining as well you can see this game you can repeat this you can watch my facebook live session even after the session has been uh, completed and of course i would uh, i'm cont contemplating uploading these videos on youtube as well so later i can give you the youtube link on my facebook page you can see these games again and again and you can uh, you know you can revise this principle revisit these principles so today before finishing the session uh i would like to say thanks for all of you for watching this and as usual sabhi sessions khatam karne ke pehle ek chhota sa piece of advice to all of you or suggestions for, to all of you chest se bahar nikal ke uh agla 24 ghante mai kal fir 7 baje aaunga lekin tab tak mai aap se ek chhota uh vinati karunga कि अगर संभव हो आप प्रैक्टिस कीजिए आप कुछ भी करते हो अगर चेस खेल रहे हो तो चेस खेलिए या जो भी आप काम कर रहे हो आप माइंडफुली सचेतन होके वो काम कीजिए ये न केवल आपका आ, मैं बहुत समय जानता हूँ सुना हूँ कि चेस प्लेयर्स जो बहुत प्रैक्टिस करते हैं अभ्यास करते हैं चेस वो कभी कभी बोलते हैं कि Uh, अभी मजबूरन मुझे दूसरा काम करना पड़ रहा है तो मेरा चेस का प्रैक्टिस इंटरप्टेड हो रहा है मुझे अच्छा नहीं लग रहा है मज़ा नहीं आ रहा है किसी दूसरे काम करने में आई ओनली लव प्लेइंग चेस एंड प्रैक्टिसिंग बट एक्चुअली व्हाट दे मिस इज इफ यू डू ऑल ईच एंड एवरी वर्क इन योर लाइफ माइंडफुली यू आर प्रैक्टिसिंग चेस यू आर प्रैक्टिसिंग कॉन्सेंट्रेशन एंड ऑफकोर्स दैट वर्क विच इज़ डन माइंडफुली इज yoga it's called it's a sort of karma yoga so i would suggest all of you to spend next 24 hours i mean apart from sleep consciously making conscious decisions and of course practicing chess going through the games not only which i have shown you but other games as well so stay happy stay safe bane rahiye we shall meet once again tomorrow same time with some new game thank you goodbye